Anyone that presents a memorial would actually be transferred to university campus. I work in the ED there. Um, as we were saying, there's a large disparity of what's being taught at different hospitals. For us right now, we started with, just to make it simple, what we were talking about, the PAPR suit. We started with what was called the N95. I went in the other day to do the donning, is what is putting on of the equipment. And by the time you were done putting the N95s on and your hood and everything else, probably took about, I want to say, six to eight minutes. And then the whole time that you were to go into the room with the patient, you're breathing your own CO2 in. So your time is limited that you can spend in that room. And usually they're limiting the exposure, so it's usually just going to be the nurse that goes in and probably not a tech. So then they were saying, right, well, we switch to the pappers where you'll get to breathe, but it's a very heavy suit. And then you have to have two people because when, once you put the suit in and you go into this room, when you're coming out of the room, the person can be vomiting, um, the primary symptoms are vomiting and diarrhea. So you're possibly infected with all those materials. Then we're told, while you're in the suit, you've got to wipe everything off with bleaches, step back into this other room, and then someone has to supervise you taking off the equipment. And most likely, that's how the nurses from Texas were infected. Um, so we have true concerns that I was given 15 to 20 minutes to do this once, and then I had to pretend that I had some of the equipment because it wasn't in yet. So I mean, I appreciate the fact that they're moving forward to develop a plan, but if we're supposed to actually be accepting patients from the central area into um, our six ICU unit, I think that we need to be better prepared, and we haven't had a drill, not a single drill. We've already had a couple of false alarms, as people are saying. There was one last week when a patient was phoned in, and it kind of missed from the air at the call center where it was supposed to be relayed to the charge nurse in the ED and then to the um, greet nurse at the front of the desk. That call was relayed, delayed. So the patient that was coming in was a pediatric patient. Primary symptom was fever and vomiting. And when they presented, there was a question of, of um, West African contacts. So this was a high risk. The patient was actually sitting in the waiting room for approximately 15 to 20 minutes next to other people um, before it was discovered that that was the patient. The, the nurse quickly isolated the patient into one of the areas. She only had um, a mask and gloves. Um, when she called to the pediatric area to accept the patient from this triage room, um, the pediatric uh, area said that they, um, at that time, felt unprepared to accept the patient. But it was acceptable for the nurse to be with the patient. Mm -hmm. So um, they had paged um, uh, the infectious disease people to come down, and then the patient was eventually cleared from high risk. There was a miscommunication about the contacts, and then he was appropriately treated. But there was a one hour delay where the only person that was actually trying to manage and take care of this patient was an um, ill-dressed, ill-prepared, hard-working nurse that mm -hmm. shouldn't be put in that type of situation.